And I've seen comedians, we, we call them uh, comedy liars. Right. They be like, they'll tell stories like, you don't do that. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It'd be like, um, like me sleeping with white women. I would never tell a joke about that. Cause it doesn't happen. You don't? <laughs> but who like this is this is what I want to know. How did you feel so comfortable with tapping into a, I don't know, another, this is me. I don't know another white person who's more comfortable with being in the presence of black people and use that as like, yo, my black friend, it's like when certain people say it, it's like, okay, cool. But it's like, you're stamped. Like your obvious experiences in the culture has given you context to be able to, you know, share with the world. I just always been very, I've been comfortable with my own skin. Mm -hmm. So I never felt like I had to, um, like, I, you know, it, I'll put it like this. If you like black girls, mm -hmm. you gotta go to black shit. <laughs> I, I, if I'm trying to meet black girls, I'm not going to a Garth Brooks concert. I'm gonna go to Summer Jam. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you, I, I think initially, even before I was doing stand-up, man, like I would hang out with all the black guys in the Navy because they, they, they did things I like to do. Yeah. You know, I, I like to play pickup basketball. I liked, I just like music. I like banging. No, I like country music. Right. I like rock music, but I wouldn't go to the concert. You know, I listened to it. I liked it. But where did this come from, though? This is I like, I've met multiple people that are Caucasians, right? And I'm like, bro, you ever been with a black girl? No. And I meet a lot of black dudes and be like, hey, yo, bro, like, you ever been with a white girl? Or dated a white girl? You know what I'm saying? No. What pushed you to this? I want to try to talk to a, a black girl. I, this is going to sound odd. I always say it's probably like, to me, it was like being gay. Like gay guys know they're gay. Mm. They don't know why they're gay. They're just gay. Mm. I don't know. I was just basically my, my right. was like, this is what we like. And I looked at it like, this is what we're doing. This Let's ride. <laughs> That's making you what ready, bro. <laughs> Why fight it? Let's go. Uh, always, but it was weird. Like always, I didn't go to school with a lot of black women. Mm. My school was probably white. Um, I, I don't know. But you're saying Cincinnati, Ohio, or Ohio as a whole is not a state that you'd be like, bro. It's a lot of black people there. Now, granted, there's a lot of black people everywhere. Yeah. But it's like, at what age did you understand, like, yo, bro? Oh, I was young, bro. I'm talking like different strokes. Good times, you know, facts of life. I was looking at Tootie, you know. <laughs> Though let's not even get on Janet Jackson. Mm. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a, yeah. I don't know. So, like, as you're growing up, right, not only just from that culture dynamic, um, who did you who did you look up to or who inspired you the most for you to identify, like, bro, I want to I want to rock with this this comedian. I would say, I wouldn't say it was one comedian. I would say when, when I saw Def Comedy Jam the first time I was in high school, mm. I had never seen a crowd. One, I'd never seen a, 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 someone like Martin just literally go in on people. Personally, just right. And, and like, I'm talking like hard when he said that, uh, you know, when he said the one about somebody, MC Light, and he goes, and I'm there. And the crowd went nuts when he first said it. I was like, oh, he's going to gonna die. Yeah. And then everybody just started laughing. I went, oh, wow, yeah. this isn't personal. Yeah. And just seeing like Bernie Mac on there and just, I mean, all the greats. And I was like, that's the reaction I want. Yeah. I didn't want the, uh, mm -hmm. I like him like moving out right. their seats right. type. Because I always say like the biggest difference between white audiences and black audiences is it's the, it's the whole extreme. Mm -hmm. You'll never bomb that bad in a white audience, mm. but you'll also won't get the love from Correct. a white audience. A so point. it's like the extreme on both sides. And I think a lot of white comics, when I was coming up, they went, when, even when I got to LA, I was doing all the black rooms because mm -hmm. that's who knew me. You know, Guy Tory gave me my first shot at Fat Tuesdays. And man, back in the late 90s, early 2000s, everybody was at Fat Tuesday. Mm. Everybody. I mean, you, you, there, it wouldn't be a night. You see Denzel there. You see Ooh. Kobe there. You see Shaq. You see everybody was there. Really? You know, I got, I got my first movie because Jamie Foxx was there. Mm. You know, so he's like, you never knew who was in the audience. But I think a lot of the white comics wouldn't do it 
because they, I think they would see Def Jam. They would see shows talking about right. the Apollo. And that was probably intimidating. Right. To me, it was like, oh. I, I always looked at it like, if I could do the Apollo, man, if I can make them laugh, yeah. I'm good. But like, uh, what I'm hearing is you didn't want to be safe, right? Because safe is two, two different sides. Like, when you're safe, you're that person that's okay, yeah, yeah. But when you're not, it's just like, bro, you either got some lovers that's like dying about your content or it's just like, oh, I just don't like them. So much so that I'm like, David Chappelle, right? And even recently, uh, Chris Rock, right? When you, when, when you use comedy, the state of comedy now is, it's still an art, right? It's a form of expression, but it's still a, from a joking matter. I, I, I seen a person like Richard Pryor use comedy to inform people, you know what I'm saying, about the insufficiencies of humanity, right? And he was slipping in strategically, and obviously you see David Chappelle do it too. You know, his the art of his storytelling is something that I love to admire, but do you think the state of comedy is too serious now? I mean, it can be, but I think if you go to a live show, like, if you really go to a comedy club, mm -hmm. nothing's changed. I think we're so caught up in social media and the internet, we think it's hindering comedians, mm. and you think we're tailoring our acts towards that, whether it's too political or can't say what we want to say. I think that's why we've gotten to the point where you got to put your phones away, because you don't want somebody taking a, a 30 second thought of an eight minute joke yeah. and posing it, and then you know, people just, and the thing about the internet too is the people that really get upset, like they were never gonna pay to see me anyways. That's a fact. I'm always like this. I, if you send me a DM or a message and you came to my show and you paid money to see me, I'll respond to you. Mm -hmm. Cause you don't, you invested your time and money in me. The least I could do is respond to you. Whether you, 90% of it is good, mm -hmm. but every now and then you'll strike a chord with somebody and like that or something. Right. Doesn't have a lot, but I'll, I'll respond to those people. You're just going in, you, and you didn't come see me live. You're going off a clip, yeah, or an interview. I go, you're not a fan, yeah. So I, you're so who's I don't so your opinion. now? And I have to ask it from a teenage perspective because they see comedy now as the Instagram clip, or um, like I look at a guy like Desi Banks, mm -hmm. right? Extremely funny. He has this funny way of expressing you know, the reality of a hood dude, right? Yeah. Uh, Drewski, another uh, a, a person who is extremely educated, articulate, and he personifies like everybody knows that guy that they portray, right? Coming up in this day and age where you have social media versus when you was coming up, you didn't have, it was word of mouth, you know what I'm saying? You ever heard of this dude named Gary O? Who? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what's the benefits of, of both, or the benefits of both, and what's the negative or the things that you have to warrant yourself from the other? See, when you bring up someone like Desi Banks or Drewski, it's like those type of guys, and it sounds crazy to me being older than them, they inspire me mm. because they, when I was coming up, we, we didn't have the independence. We couldn't just like get our jokes and then build a fan base. Now with Instagram, YouTube, they're not, quote unquote, they don't need the machine, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. They're doing it on their own and like the machine's coming to them. So when I see stuff like that, I'm like, dang. I was like, I just, I wish it was around when I first started. Right. But I, I see Desi all the time and I'm like, when I tell him, I said, I always make sure I message him and everything. I just tell him, you're killing it, keep doing it. Yeah. Because it's, it's really is, it's some inspiring stuff to, to think, because my road manager met Desi Banks at Smoothie King. He used to work at Smoothie King. What? And he was like, he would tell my road manager, like, yeah, I'm trying to do this stand-up thing and doing sketches and stuff. And when we he started to pop, my road manager was like, yo, that That's guy a was dude. a Smoothie yeah, King. Yeah, yeah. He used to make me smoothies. So to hear stories like that, I'm not one of these quote-unquote OGs that are like, yeah, you know, they, did, they ain't real stand-ups and all that mm -hmm. shit. Look, man, if you can find a way to build a fan base... Right all respect to you and you can sell tickets mm -hmm. and you can make money and provide a living mm -hmm. i'm looking at it like okay how can i piggyback off that <laughs>